Good morning, church. How are we doing this morning? You guys want to stand up with me? Let's jump into some worship. Let's have a good time. Who's happy to be here this morning? Yeah. Thank you. Hold on one second. Sorry. I was not ready. Okay, let's do this again. Let's have some fun this morning.
that we serve an amazing God. Do we not? He is, he is an omnipresent God, an always present God. All right? This song, this next song, it says, His promise still stand. Right? So that means the promises to the Israelites, the promises to Abraham, all those the promises throughout the Bible still impact and, and are still working in our lives. So as we go into this next song, just, just keep that in mind and then just, just worship him. Know that we serve a God that never fails, that, that never runs away, that no problem is, is too big for our God. So just keep that in mind while we go into this next song here.
still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. Let me hear you sing it. just for being the one that gives us things when we hold our hands out, but, but for being our creator, our savior. Thank you, Father. Oh, you're so good, God. Your 
your constant grace remains the cornerstone. Things that we find burden are breathing in life again. You cast your sun to shine on darkest nights. For all that you've done, we will pour out our love. This will be.
worship you this morning. We put our attention to you. We put our focus toward you. We choose to look to you right now. Take all of our attention away from the things going on in life. Father, right now we allow our hearts to just adore you. Love on you. Father, we're so grateful for all the amazing things that you've done for us, the things that you continue to do for us. So grateful that you sent Jesus for us to make things right between us and you. Father, we love you this morning. We're so incredibly grateful for choosing us. I thank you that you've made a way for us. Lord, we love you today. We thank you for sending Jesus. We thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to live on the inside of us. Father, thank you that we have the opportunity to gather together to be here together, to corporately spend time with you and with one another, to be in your presence. Father, I thank you that it's coming real soon that everybody will be able to be back together. Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can go ahead and be seated. We're going to continue this morning with our giving. I again want to thank you for being so generous with your giving for the uh, Merrimack Valley School District with all the supplies. Uh, We've got one last delivery coming up this week. Um, We ordered the high school, the supplies they needed, we had to order. Uh, They needed hats, coats, and gloves. And so we ordered all of those, and uh, those will be in. The rest of them will be in this week, and so we'll get those delivered. So once again, thank you for those who uh, have been giving um, over and above towards that. Again, if you're giving here at the church, you're giving towards that. Uh, But I know many of you have given extra towards that as well, and so thank you for that. We've been getting cards, uh, thank you cards in the mail from the schools, thanking us for uh, the the supplies. And um, they've made, several of them have made... um, social media posts about it. So again, I just so appreciate all that you all are doing uh, to to be a blessing to our community. Amen? Amen. Uh, If you're giving today, as you can see on the screen, four opportunities or ways that you can do that. You can text it in, text it to 84321. Uh, You can give it our website, rockfamilychurch.net. Click on the the give link, um, or you can uh, do it by mail, or you can do it here in person. If you're doing it here in person, you can drop that at Rock Central on your way out as soon as we dismiss. So uh, let's go ahead and pray. Uh, over that and uh, let you go ahead and give. Father, we just thank you today for the opportunity that we have to be a part of what you are doing here through this church, Um, not just for us physically as a church, but also for our community. Um, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity that we have to be plugged into what's going on all over the world. And uh, Lord, we just thank you so much. You've taken such good care of us that we have the ability to give. You've given us the means to be able to give. Father, we want to be a part of that. We give because we love you. We give because we so appreciate what you've done for us. And Lord, we just want to be a part of what you're doing. So we thank you for this opportunity right now. I thank you that your word declares, Father, that as we give, that you take care of us. You see that all of our needs are met. And you also see that we have extra, that we can be a blessing to others. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I know many of you have given extra as well for the building for our missionaries in uh, South Pacific and the Samoan Islands. So I appreciate that. Uh, We gave extra to our missionaries in Uganda recently. They hosted the um, camp that they do at the beginning of the school year for the college students that we got to send a team over to Uganda last year to be with them. So for them, it looked a little different, of course, this year. And so um, they hosted camp and it was much smaller, um, but um, we were able to help send some funds to help them to continue to train up leaders in Uganda as well and pour into the students there. And so uh, that's, that's all part of what you're making happen. So I thank you for that. A um, couple things. Don't forget, uh, we've got some, I know some folks bought long sleeve hoodies last week. We've got some of those. We're going to get some winter um, hoodies in as well and possibly some jackets. Um, but our decals are in, the smaller ones are in. So if you want to grab a smaller decal, 
I see that decal. <laughs> um, the smaller ones fit perfectly, as I said, on a phone. You can put them on the back of a helmet, your bicycle helmet, your, you know, if you're a, I, I say that because my kids wear helmets when they ride their bikes, but um, if you uh, enjoy riding motorcycles, you can put it on that helmet as well, but um, smaller ones, you can put those anywhere you want, and uh, so pick those up. Those are free. Uh, you can grab one of those at Rock Central um, on your way out, and then lastly, do not forget, everybody say next Sunday. Next Sunday is our trunk or treat. And we're going to do that right after service at 1130. And so make sure you get registered for that. We've got several people who've already registered to uh, decorate their vehicle or work a game. So if you want to participate in that, make sure you get um, signed up for that. Um, kind of crazy. We created the uh, Facebook event page so you can go on there and let us know if you're coming or not. Um, but we've got a lot of people interested in it that have never been before. Um, and so I suspect that we'll probably see an influx of people just because things are not happening right now obviously out in the community. And so what a great opportunity, again, for us just to be a blessing to our community. And uh, I've had people asking me about it, and I'm like, I'm thinking, how did you even know we were doing that? And then I'm like, oh, yeah, it does, out on Facebook. Um, so anyway, so you can promote that as well, but um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We always have a great time with that. So that is next Sunday. So be here for that. Awesome. All right, well, it's good to see everybody this morning um, that's able to be here. Those that are joining us online, good to have you with us as well. And uh, we're going to go ahead and continue with our series. And so we started a series at the beginning of this month, obviously being that Halloween is at the end of the month, we're calling it Beware. And so we've talked about several things. I encourage you to go back and, and watch those if you've missed them. But today, if you are taking notes, the title for today is simply this, Beware of the Natural. So we've talked about beware of self, beware of sin. Today, I want to talk about beware of the natural. You'll understand as we get going here, kind of where we're going with this. Um, but what I want to talk about is we as human beings, obviously, we live in a very natural world. Duh, right? We have to take care of our natural needs. We have to eat. We have to sleep, right? We have to drink plenty of, hopefully, water, um, get plenty of fluids. You know, um, there are things that we have to tend to. We have to go to the store. We have to pay bills. We get, you know, we go to work. All of those things, those are all very natural things. And we, you know, we hop in our car to get here. That's a very natural thing. And so we are so accustomed to living in a natural state of being, if you will, that we overlook the fact of the spiritual world around us. And here's the thing. The spiritual world is way more real and way more active than our natural world. The thing is, we often overlook it or we don't even think to look for it because we're so trained in our natural world, right? I mean, from the time we're born, you're trained in the natural and we overlook the supernatural, we overlook the spiritual. And so when I say beware of the natural, I'm talking about beware of getting so caught up in only seeing things from a natural perspective that you're missing out what's going on, all right? So what I want to do is I want to go back to the very beginning, to Genesis, and this, this trap of only focusing on the natural or only getting caught up in the natural and not seeing what's really going on around us, it started all the way back with Adam and Eve. So if we go back to Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, you know, this is when Adam and Eve are in the garden, and God tells them, you know, the, the whole garden's yours, enjoy it, spend time, you know, with me, let's enjoy, you know, just hanging out with one another. You can enjoy everything except for what? One tree, right? Enjoy everything else. So the enemy comes along, and in, in verse 1 it says, The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? This is where it started right here. Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. Die. What's the serpent's response? You won't die. The serpent replied to the woman, God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. Notice the next four words. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her, so she took some of the fruit and ate it. So here's the thing, the trap of getting so focused on just the natural and missing out on the bigger picture started back with Adam and Eve, because the enemy is doing the same thing today that he did back then. 
trying to get you and I to question, to doubt, to not agree with or go along with anything that God has to say. I mean, he says, you know, when, when Eve told him what God had told him, he's like, you're not going to die. Here's the thing. She, right then and there, she started believing the enemy over God. How many times do we do that? See, here's the thing. Why did the enemy even question that? Because he's trying to do what? He's trying to put a monkey wrench, right? He's trying to throw, uh, you know, um, just something in there to wreak havoc on the plan that God has for your life. And see, when the enemy comes knocking at your door, trying to get you to question things, sending thoughts your way, what is he trying to do? He's trying to get you off path. Why is he doing that? Because he's ticked off. Because that's what happened to him, right? God's like, see ya, kaboosh. He got kicked out. So now he wants what? He wants everybody to go down with him. Think about that. When you get caught, what is your first response? You start doing what? You want to blame everybody else and you want everybody else to go down with you. See, the enemy is attacking because he knows there's a bigger picture that sometimes we're not getting, that sometimes we're not seeing. See, there was a reason why God said, enjoy everything, but just don't eat from that tree. And the attacks started coming right then. So here's the thing. How many times has God shared things with you that the enemy comes and attacks? How many times has he shown you things for your future or shown you answers to things or, you know, given you scriptures for things and the enemy comes in and starts putting that doubt in there, that questioning in there? Why is he doing that? Because there is a bigger picture at play and he's trying to get you out of alignment. And see, the thing is, when we are so focused on the natural, that's what happens. We get out of alignment with what God has for us. Because if we're looking on everything that we see with our natural eyes, we're going to miss what God's doing in the bigger picture. I mean, I loved it as we're worshiping all these songs that we sang this morning, all of them just talking about, I mean, I've seen him move, him move the mountains, talking about how he can make a way through seas, right? He turned bones into armies. Those things are not natural. But if all we do is focus on the natural and what I think I can or can't accomplish, I'm going to miss out on a whole lot more that God has for me. I mean, the fact that they threw a dead man onto a a pile of bones and the dude came back to life means that there's something more going on than what we can see in the natural. I mean, it's like the whole Transformers thing, more than meets the eye, right? See, there's so much more going on in our world than what we see with our natural eyes. And if we can only see with our natural eyes, we are so blinded by things that are happening. And God wants us to be aware of what's going on. And it started all the way back in the beginning. The spiritual world, as I said, is more real than the natural. And so here's a couple of examples. If we go to John chapter 21 and verse three, Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. Okay. Notice it says they caught nothing all night, right? If you've ever been fishing and you caught absolutely nothing, and you spent an entire work shift doing it, you're not really happy. You're frustrated, right? I mean, we had the two boys fishing just a couple weekends ago when we were down and visiting Kelly's family, and I mean, just three casts and nothing, and they're like, "Eh, this is so boring, we haven't caught anything, Ah," you know, like, that's how we get, right? So they've caught nothing all night long, and it says, at dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, But the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, fellas, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, throw out your net on the right-hand side of the boat and you'll get some. What would your natural response be to that? Number one, they don't know it's Jesus, right? I just said that. So what's my response going to be when I just spent eight hours trying to fish and I haven't caught a thing? Dude, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. We've been out here all night long. I tried the right side. I tried the left side. I tried by the trees. I tried out in the middle. Like, we've tried it. It doesn't work. There's something bigger happening here. So they did. And they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. Then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord! When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic, for he had stripped for work, jumped into the water, and headed to shore. 
There will be times when Jesus will ask you, when you will be asked by the Lord to do things that in the natural don't make sense, that in the natural just want to tick you off because I've been trying. I've done everything that I know to do. I've fished on this side. I've fished on that side. I changed the lure. I tried a net. I tried live bait. I've tried all of this stuff and it isn't working and I don't want to do anymore right now. Because that would be my response. And then Jesus is going to come and say, okay, I need you to try it this way right now. And I'm going to be like, are you kidding me? But see, again, if all I'm doing is looking at the natural of I, 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 and all of I did not work, then lightning quick brain has to go, oh yeah, maybe there's a different way of doing this. And God knows better, right? See, when he's asking you to do something, he's doing it because he's setting you up for something bigger. It might not look like... It might make no sense in the natural. It might not. Everything it might in you, within you might be going, no. And God's saying, this is what I need you to do. He's setting you up. Sometimes for the miraculous. See, the thing is, we've got to get out of just looking at what we see in the natural. Acts chapter 16, starting in verse 16. One day as we were going down to the place of prayer... We met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the truth, or to tell the future, sorry, that enabled her to tell the truth. Okay, so it says she had a spirit, I find that interesting, had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future, and we hear about those nowadays. She earned a lot of money for her masters by telling fortunes, right? We call them what? Fortune tellers. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting. So clearly this is not Paul writing this, right? These men are servants of the Most High God, and they have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated that he turned and said to the what? The demon within her. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, and instantly it left her. See, what looked like in the natural, someone going, oh, these men are on an assignment from God. Oh, they're here to tell us all this. And Paul turns around and talks to a demon? See, there was something bigger at play here, right? There was something bigger happening here. That if all we do is look at it with our natural eyes, we're missing out on what God has. And instantly that demon left her. I can't tell you the number of times I see people post things like, especially when it's this time of year, you know, how they're going to um, see fortune tellers, or they're going to see mediums, or they're going to do this or do that. Not a good idea. Because we look at that in the natural and we go, oh, did you, that was really cool what they said. Oh, they were so spot on on what they shared. So was this girl. Why are they so spot on on what they shared? Because who's influencing them? Something in the spirit world. The spirit world sees what's going on in the spirit world. So it doesn't matter if it's a good spirit or a bad spirit. In this particular situation, it was a demon that could see the same things that all of the angels could see, if you will. And Paul recognized, I'm not looking in my natural right here. I recognize this is not clean. And he addressed it. And he dealt with it. Something bigger is at play. The spiritual world is more real than the natural world. If you look at our country right now, see, it's real easy to go, man, I can't believe they would do that. Man, I can't believe they would say that. Man, I can't believe. Did you hear about so-and-so? Man, I can't believe. It's one of the most popular things you probably heard this year. I can't believe. I can't believe. There are spiritual influences behind everything that is going on. See, here's the thing. We go, oh man, I can't believe. But here's the thing. Somebody once said that about you too. Why? Because there was a spiritual influence in your life that you gave into and you did something really dumb too. And people are then going, man, I can't believe that they did that. Well, why did they do it? Because there was a spiritual influence in their life at the time that they gave into. 
The things that you see happening, that you see people doing, it's because there's a spiritual influence at work. You want to talk about a war happening right now? There is a war going on in the spirit realm. And here's the thing. It plays itself out in the natural world, right? And we do what? We get ticked off about it. What are we supposed to be doing? The things that we see happening are fruit. Fruit is able to develop because it's attached to something that's attached to the root. Right? When you plant something, it grows fruit, right? You want it to grow and produce something. It might be vegetation, you know, it could be a plant life or it could be something, you know, you're planting a garden and you want tomatoes to grow or whatever. Pumpkins, we're picking pumpkins right now. You want pumpkins to grow. The fruit that you're enjoying came from a root. See, everything that you're seeing happening right now in our world is fruit that's attached to a root. And that root isn't necessarily always good. Sometimes it needs to be pulled out. And sometimes you can't pull weeds like you do in the natural just by getting out your garden and plucking them out. How do you deal with a spiritual root? You can only deal with it in prayer. The spirit world is more real than the natural. Go with me to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, starting in verse 15, it says, If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, this is Jesus talking, and he will give you another advocate, helper, comforter, counselor, depends on what translation you're reading, who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Okay, that's not natural, right? I mean, that's, that's a spiritual thing. But here's the thing. Why is he sent in the Holy Spirit? Because at that point in time, Jesus was with them in the present, right? He was physically there and he could lead them. He could tell them, he could, you know, don't do this, do that. This is what, you know, he could physically show them, but he's like, you know, there's coming a point in time now that I've been spending time with you and I've been training you and I'm about to send you out and you got to go out into the world and be me to everybody else. So here's the thing, you're going to need some help. So I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit who's going to be, what did he say? In you. Why? To be the same guide that I have been to you all this time. Why did, why did we need the Holy Spirit? Because the spiritual world is more real than the natural world. And if we're not in tune with the Spirit of God that's on the inside of us, when we become a Christian, we're going to miss it. We have to be in tune to this right here. We have to listen to what he says. And if he says, no, go, then I don't go. And if he says, go, 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 then I go, 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 go. See, we often look at things in the scripture and we think, man, you know, God's just trying to steal all the fun or, you know, like, we play things off like that because we're looking at it in the natural. What we're overlooking is that there is something spiritual happening when we go against God's word. We don't see it until we get so far down the line that then we're like, oh my gosh, where did I go wrong? And then I'm trying to get back. Why? Because the spirit world is more real than the natural world. I mean, beware the natural. Why? Why? Because it's so easy to get tripped up into only seeing the natural world that I don't see what's going on in addition to what I see in the natural. So God gave us the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit's in tune with the what? The spiritual world, right? So he's able to guide us because he sees things that we don't see. I mean, I, I've shared the story about how, you know, I, I got, when I was out running and got hit by a car. I mean, the Spirit of God was warning me ahead of time, like, you need to go home, you need to go home, you need to go home, stop running and go home. And I was just like, eh, that's just my body saying, you're an idiot, you don't need to be doing this, go home. And I overrode that, I didn't listen. Why was God trying to tell me to go home? Because he knew what was up ahead. Thank God there was a kid in our youth group that listened, because when I just kept running, going, all right, body, just, we're, you know, we're training. We got we to gotta push through this. We got to keep moving. You know, it's like God's like, okay, you're clearly not listening. 
You know, so one of the kids in our youth group, you know, God told me I needed to pray for you and I need to pray for you right now for safety. Because God knows what's going on. He sees things that we don't see. And if we'll listen, I love how uh, <laughs> Brother Mark Hankin says, the Holy Spirit will make you look like a genius right. if you will listen. The Holy Spirit will lead you to do things that then you'll be like, oh, well, that's why you told me to do that. You know, and everybody's like, how did you know that? Because the Spirit of God is on the inside of me. I mean, we were singing that this morning, he'll never leave you, right? I mean, he's there, what? To help you get through this life. Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 11, it says, Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. That's not natural stuff. Put on all of God's armor so that you're able to take on all of these unseen things. You're not fighting a physical battle here. It's spiritual. The Passion Translation reads it this way. Your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Message Translation says this. This is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. See, when I read, you're not fighting flesh and blood, again, it brings things up that I'm like, oh. Again, when I look around our world, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, we're not fighting flesh and blood. I mean, people are doing some crazy, whacked out stuff right now. But it's because of the influence that's in their life. I mean, we're going to be voting here real soon. Right? People always say, who you vote for? Who you got to vote for? Well, you got to look at the influence in a person's life when you're voting for someone to be in charge of something. What is the influence in that, in that individual's life? Is it godly or is it not? That's how you vote. You vote for whoever has, in some instances, whoever has the most godly influence in their life. Because unfortunately, we don't always get what we would consider to be the absolute best candidate. So I'm looking at the fruit in a person's life, and I'm looking at the influence that's in their life. And if it doesn't line up with what God's word says, then I can't support that. I can't vote for that. Because if I want the blessing of God and I want his influence in my life, then I've got to follow what his word says. And that doesn't matter what party that person happens to be. There are influences happening all over the place right now. There are things trying to influence you right now. There are things trying to influence your life right now. I mean, when the scripture says, to be cautious, beware of who you choose to be friends with or who you choose to surround yourself with in close proximity. You know what I'm saying? Like who's your closest tight-knit group of people that you spend the bulk of your time with? There's a reason why the scripture warns us about being very cautious about who we let in because you have to understand what is behind that individual. You know what I'm saying? Like what is, what is the motivations? What are the, the influences spiritually in that person's life? You have to be careful of those things. The spiritual world is more real than the natural. Second Corinthians, last scripture, chapter 5. 
verse 1. Now, this is a super popular scripture used for funerals, um, but it's fitting for today. It says, For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. Now, why do I read that scripture today? Because we are first and foremost a spirit being. Scripture tells us that our life is fleeting. It's as a mist, as some translations say here on this earth. This flesh that we have, it's so limited. It's the spirit that's real. And the only reason we have the flesh is what I was, like for me, is how my mind sees it. The only reason we have the flesh is because you need something to hold gravity, right? To hold that spirit here. But you only have this flesh for a little bit. It's your real person on the inside, your spirit being that lives on. And this scripture says, you know, when this earthly tent we live in is taken down. When you go camping, you camp in your tent, you put up your tent. When you're done, you take it down, you pack it up and you put it away, right? When this tent is taken down, the real me is going to come out of this tent. And the real me is going to live on in eternity. I mean, think about that. You're only here for a short period of time. Eternity is forever and ever and ever, right? Forever. It's hard to comprehend what that is because we are so natural in our thinking, right? But your spirit being will live on for eternity, forever and ever 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 in the presence of God, if you know him. The spirit spirit world is more real than this natural world. You will be given a house in heaven and an eternal body made for us by God himself. And how many of us are like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Getting a new body. That body is eternal because that body is spiritual in nature because the spiritual world is more real than the natural. It goes on in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7 to say this, we live by believing and not by seeing. More popular translation, we walk by faith and not by beware the natural. See, here's the thing. What do we tend to do if we're not careful? We walk by sight and we just keep walking by sight, Right? When we just walk by sight, we're missing out on a whole lot. See, when we get frustrated because of what we see, take a step back. Recognize there's an influence behind what I'm getting frustrated at. And my getting frustrated does what? Keeps me from fulfilling everything that God has for me. Because what does it do? It stops me in my tracks, right? Because I'm going to stop here for a minute and I'm going to get ticked off and I'm going to get frustrated and I'm going to get mad and I'm going to get, you know what I'm saying? And what is it doing? It's hindering me from moving forward. All because there's a spiritual influence trying to throw a monkey wrench in my plans. The message translation of verse 7 says this, it's what we trust in but don't yet see that keeps us going. My trust is in who? Not me, Right? can't be in me because I'm limited. It's got to be in him because he sees the end from the beginning. He knows what's next. And if I'll just stay in tune with him, he'll tell me how to get to the next spot. He'll tell me how to get the thing that I need. He'll give me the answer. He'll give me like, he will open that door if I'll just stay in tune with him. The thing is, I've got to be patient sometimes in doing that. That's why the scripture says love is first and foremost patient. Because what do we tend not to be? Patient. I want it done and I want it done right now, right? Patient. See, the thing is, I have to practice patience because why? And I, I, you're probably like, okay, you can stop repeating that. I have to practice patience because the spiritual world is more real than the natural. See, I'm getting impatient because of what I see happening in the natural 
And God's going, I just need you to be patient for a second here because I'm working something here that you can't see that's about to happen for you if you'll just chill out. Spiritual, way more real than the natural. And here's the thing, and I'll wrap up with this. Go ahead and stand up. How many times, you don't even have to raise your hand, but how many times have you had those times in life where you're doing something and you just get that nudging on the inside? Happens all the time, right? Why? Because the spiritual world is more real than the natural. That's just the spirit of God trying to get your attention on something. And again, if we'll yield to that, if we'll listen to that, if we'll follow that, we get all of his blessing. And that's what you want. That's what I want. I want his hand on my life and I want his blessing on my life, right? How do I do that? Stay in tune with him. Because he sees, knows, operates in the spirit realm. And I'm limited in my natural realm here. But if I stay in tune with him, I get what? I get the best of both worlds, right? I can enjoy everything I see in the natural world, but I also get him looking out for me in the spiritual world. And he takes care of me. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. And Lord, I thank you for your word that helps to, to guide us in life. And it helps to, to, to keep us in line, really, in life. And Father, I thank you that your word tells us to beware of so many different things. But today as we're talking about just being beware of the natural and not getting so caught up in our natural world and so narrowly focused that just all we see is our natural world and we miss the bigger picture that's happening. And that there's a spiritual world around us that's so much more real than our natural world. Father, I thank you that as we step into a relationship with you, you give us the Holy Spirit to live on the inside of us. And the Holy Spirit is active and real and operating and very much a part of that spiritual world. And he's able to guide us accordingly. He's able to tell us which way to go and which way not to go. He's able to, to lead us into the plan that you have for us and into all of the blessings that you have for us and ultimately to, to complete the assignment that you have for us. And so, Lord, I thank you that we can walk by faith in you and not by our sight because our natural world is so limited. Father, I thank you that you give us the ability to live in a natural world, but yet be a part of a spiritual world as well. Father, we're so incredibly grateful that you loved us enough again to send the Holy Spirit, that we could be successful here in this life. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm going to hang out up here um, just for a few minutes afterward. And again, if, if you're here this morning, you say, man, I don't, I don't have a relationship with God. Like, I don't have that connection. I don't, I don't get that, you know. I don't have that guide in my life, you know, that, that sees things in, in, in a different realm than I do. Um, but you, you want to you be connected to God. You want a relationship with Him. Come talk to me. Let's talk about that. Uh, maybe you, you've had a relationship and you've just kind of grown distant and you want to reconnect. Um, come talk to me about that. Uh, I'd love to to pray with you, to talk with you. Uh, again, if you're watching online, you can reach out to us here at the church. Um, 257-ROCK, that's the phone number. Give us a call. Let's talk. Um, reach out to us through email as well. But uh, we want to help you take life to the next level. Um, and one of the greatest ways that you can do that is to be connected to God himself. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, don't forget all the things that we talked about earlier. That, um, stop by Rock Central, drop in your offering, get registered for Trunk or Treat, pick up the decals. Um, if you want, still want to be a part of the Christmas production coming up, you can get registered, pick up some information for that as well there at Rock Central. Um, love you guys. Have a great day, and uh, we'll see you next time.